lusts of the flesh. Teach us, God, how to have more of you and less of me. Teach us, God, how to walk this crucified life that we have in you. Now we give you glory. We praise you and we magnify your name. You loved us so much that you saved us, delivered us, brought us out of yeah, yeah. darkness and brought us out of a place that was oh, killing us. Right. Translated us into this yeah. this wonderful, awesome kingdom yeah. of your dear son. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You put us in the light, God. And we thank you. We know we didn't deserve it. It wasn't because of any goodness on our part, but just because you loved us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. We have this wonderful life. And it is wonderful, guys, and we thank you. We magnify you in Jesus' name. Now, Father, we would ask that your word that goes forth today would fall on good ground. Hey, God, that it would fall on good ground and that it would cause production. Production, yes. Yeah, yeah. In the life of we, your people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Our focus this morning is on free from sin. Free from sin. Free from sin. Let's thank God for our celebration. Free from sin. Would you turn to your neighbor and say, it really is possible to be free from sin. I know you don't believe it, but it really is possible yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it is. to be free from sin. Yeah. You know, my brothers and sisters, the reason we do whatever we do is we do it because we choose to. No one made us. Our lives are the sum total of the choices that we make. Yeah. Let me say it again. Yeah. Our lives are the sum total yes, of the choices yes, that we make. Mm -hmm. I didn't choose for that man to beat me, but you chose to marry me. Hmm. Amen? Amen. I didn't choose to lose my job. I didn't choose to be fired, but you chose to be late. Hmm. Our lives are the sum total of the choices we make. And sometimes we don't know that a choice we may have made over there affects what happens over here. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We don't always connect the dots. Our lives are the sum total of the choices that we make. When you sin, it's because you chose to. That's right. Sight that is right. When we disobey God, it's because we chose to. Yeah, but the way she treated me, she made me cuss her out. No, she didn't. You may not have been able to control what she did, but you could control what you did. But he cut me off.
off when I was driving, and so I just had to say something to him. I pulled up next to him, gave him the finger. You didn't. But why did you do that? Because he made me. No, no, no. Yeah. You chose to speed up. You chose to roll down your window, and you chose to put up your hand. When we sin, it's because we choose to. I know you didn't like that, did you? I, but it's right. Sir. For some of you who may be as old as I am, back in the day, old Flip Wilson used to say, the devil made me do it. Yeah, the devil made me do it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Some of us adopted that as the gospel. No, no, the devil didn't make you do it. The gospel says that you're drawn away of your own lust and enticed. Uh, let me say it again. Our lives are the sum total of the choices that we make. Yeah. Yeah. Paul tells us in this letter to the Galatians, he says, walk in the spirit. And you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. Now, that sounds like a choice to me. <laughs> I can choose to walk in the spirit. And if I do, I won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. But if I don't choose to walk in the spirit, I will fulfill the lust of the flesh. So, my brothers and sisters, whenever you, feel the, whenever, whenever you fulfill the lust of the flesh... Is because you chose not to walk in the spirit. Yeah, yeah. I know that's too plain, but it's the truth. Yeah, it is the truth. Because you're either walking in the spirit or you're walking in the flesh. Yeah. You can't do both at the same time. Amen. You choose. In Ephesians, the fourth chapter, Paul says to them, you were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires, to be made new in the attitude of your minds and to put on the new self, created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. Now, the fact that he shows us the, the positive and the negative, says that I can choose which one I'm going to do. Paul said, put off the old self and put on the new self. <laughs> Did you know that you have the authority to put on the new self or to put off the old self? You have that authority. And whenever you are walking in the old self, it's because you chose to not put on the new self. See, my brother says we can choose to put on the new man or we can choose not to. God gives us the choice. Now, here, here's the good news. Here's the good news. You are a new creature in Christ Jesus. You've been made new. If you've accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior because you believe that God raised him from the dead, amen, that he was raised, justified, raised for your justification, if you believe that, then the Bible says that you are a new creature in Christ Jesus. God made you new. Now, you are a new man. But you have to choose to put it on. <laughs> Amen. You have to choose to put it on. Are you following me? No, you're not following me. Let me give you an example. Give me three people real quick. Amen. Very good. You come on. You're going to be my Holy Ghost, all right? All right, sit over here. Now, in 1 Thessalonians 5, 23, the Bible says that we're all spirit, soul, and body, right? We all have a spirit, we all have a soul, we all have a body. 
Now, when you get born again, when you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, what God does, it says in Romans 10, that he makes you a new creature. He saves you. John 3 says you are born again. Now, when you become born again, spirit, soul, and body, spirit, soul, and body, y'all got the picture, the green one is the spirit, soul, and body. Now, when you get born again, Jesus said in John 3, that which is born of spirit is spirit. So what gets born again is your spirit man. What that means is that God causes your spirit man to come alive. Amen. You've been quickened. You've been made alive. It comes alive. But how many know that when you got born again, you still had the same old flesh? Right? I, I know you thought your body looked new, but it wasn't. You got the same body. And your soul, the way you thought, your, your, your mind, your emotion, your will, the way you thought about things. When you got born again, if you got born again at 12 o'clock, at 12.01, you still thought the same. Am I right about it? But what God did in the miracle was he caused your spirit man to come alive where now he can hear from God. Yeah, yeah. But not only did he do that, Jesus said that he had to leave so the Holy Ghost can come. He said this. He said that God put the Holy Spirit inside of your spirit man. Now, this is important to understand in your Christian walk. That's where your spirit man receives instruction. See, the Holy Spirit, all of you know these things, the Holy Spirit comes to comfort us, to teach us, to guide us, to reveal to us things that are coming. Amen. <laughs> to tell us about God. Remember Jesus said when he comes, he's going to tell you about me. So, so the Holy Spirit comes, and he's there to tell you, teach you, guide you, keep you, comfort you, yeah. and reveal to you Godly things. Hallelujah. Now, that's good news. Everybody in here that's born again, this is your reality. You've been made a new creature in Christ Jesus, and your body now, your body now is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you. Yeah. Which you have of God, you're not your own, you're bought with a price. So, the Holy Spirit's on the inside of you. But you still think the same. You still have the same emotions. You still will to do what you like doing. Amen. And your body, you know, it got used to whatever it wanted to do. Sins of the flesh, yeah, yeah, it got used to it. So now you got this soul and this body that haven't been regenerated, but you got this spirit man that has. This is your new man. Yeah. This is your new man. Now, Paul says in our letter, he says, now listen now. He said, put on the new man and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. When? When you put on the new man. You won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. When? When you put on the you won't fulfill the lust of the You have a choice. You can choose to put on the new man. Another way of saying it, we read in our opening scripture, is walk in the spirit. Right? So this is the person that needs to be built up. You already know how to act crazy. Amen. You already know how to talk about folk. You already know how to act a fool. I mean, that's all in your soul, right? Amen. Well, your mind, your emotion, and your will. And see, this has all been trained by the world. Yeah. For you to understand spiritual things now with this new man, you have to be taught by the Spirit. With the word of God. Give me, give me a Bible. Now, you'll never 
learn how to walk in the spirit if you don't get in the word. That's right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I need to help somebody, see, because you come to church on Sunday and you say, you're so, hallelujah. <laughs> and your body said, glory, hey, thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Amen. If you don't get in the word and feed your spirit, man, when you get through shouting, yes, you'll go lay with somebody. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You're right about it. Amen. When you get through dancing and sweating and saying, didn't we have a good time in the Lord, you go right out the door and cuss somebody out. Teach, Brother Jerry. Teach now, are you still saved? Yeah, because you still got a new spirit. What's the problem? You put on the old man instead of the new. That's good. You chose to walk by your emotions or your flesh. Instead of by your spirit. Now here's the problem. Here's what we deal with as leaders in the local fellowship. We know that you need to feed this person. Matter of fact, the book says desire the sincere milk of the word that you can grow thereby. Right? So we know we need to feed you, your spirit man. But our problem is we got to get through your selfishness. We got to get past what's important to you. I ain't going to church all the time. Wait a minute, wait a minute. They stay in church too long. Now, now, now your spirit man ain't saying that. You know what's saying that? This old flesh. Because see, your soul man thinking, now when I get out of here, now I'm going to go by the store. I need to stop and get my clothes out there. See, and your spirit man ain't getting nothing. Because this soul, man, and this body is too strong. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, all of us have that battle every day. Yeah. Every day. And in our opening text, we, we found that the spirit that's in you, in the Holy Ghost that's in your spirit, man, it says, lusteth against the flesh. And the flesh against the spirit. Now here now, hear what it says. And they are contrary one to the other. In other words, your soul and your body don't want to obey God. Let me help you. And they never will. I know, I know you can you can you can fast till you pass out. Amen. And you can study till you show to, to show yourself proof because you can study till you can memorize every book and still not walk by the Spirit. Because to walk by the Spirit, you have to put off the old man. Yeah. That makes sense. Now, what what's the good news is is that the Holy Ghost (laughs) is on the inside of you. And the reason he's there, because see you, right now, when you got born again, you did know your your spirit man was a baby. And and I ain't never seen a baby born that could take care of itself. Amen. You come out the womb, somebody got to feed you, clothe you, burp you, teach you how to walk, talk, right? Well, see, the Holy Ghost is there to teach you how to walk, teach you how to talk. Amen. That's what he's there for, to teach you. And also, he's there to give you strength because you don't know how to fight your soul. Yeah, yeah. These have been too strong in your life. All your life, they've been leading you. Now you have to grow up in God so that you can begin to take the authority over your soul, man. So that you can follow God. You know why so many people refuse to come to the local fellowship, come to church, because they know you? (laughs) It's because 
you are saved. I, look, you, you, you're born again. The problem is when they meet you, they keep meeting your flesh. You know, because God's still trying to deal with your pride and deal with your jealousy and deal with your anger. Amen. God is still trying to deal with your unforgiveness. Amen. But the way God deals with that is with this word in your spirit. But you don't come to Bible study. Some of you ain't read your Bible yet. And some only read it on Sunday morning when we preach it. Now, help me understand something. How can you ever become spiritual to walk after your spirit when you don't know this? And, and let me help you with, with this. Sunday morning is celebration time. That ain't for me to do a Bible study for you. When we come together on Sunday morning, we come together to worship the Lord together, to shout together, to exalt our king together, and get some marching instructions for the week. But through the week, you need to be getting in the word, amen, feeding your spirit, man, so that when that temptation comes, you know what to choose. The reason that we keep falling and failing, it ain't because you don't love. You say, well, I love God. Yeah, you do. I ain't saying you don't love God. The problem is you're not feeding your spirit, man. So, so we can put 150 classes in place and have no students. And you'll be the same one to call asking for prayer. Because your life is jacked up. And we'll pray for you. <laughs> and we'll trust God to deliver you. And in many cases, he will deliver you. And you'll end up in the same place a week later. And you'll call again. So we'll give you some instruction. Well, you know, are you, are you, won't you come out to Bible study so we can teach you how to grow up? I got to go to work. I, I be tired when I get out. I get out of work at 3 o'clock. I ain't coming out there at 7. Okay. But you're going to keep calling me every week because you need prayer. I mean, this is, too pra this is practical preaching this morning. We can have victory when we learn how to walk after the spirit. And then we won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. But that won't happen just because you come to church and shout. Amen. Wait a minute, let me help you. It's not going to happen because you listen to good gospel music. Amen. All of my days are in your hands. Oh God. Yeah, you can sing that till you pass out. Amen. I love that song. In your car, singing it. You run out of gas and ain't got no money. Y'all laughing. <laughs> and when you run out of gas and you got no money and you're saying all of my days are in your hands, oh God, remember, I say, I think y'all missed one part that he said. He said, God, I've been faithfully paying my time. Amen. See, see, when you're obeying God, when you get in the word of God and you start feeding your spirit, man, when the temptation comes, when the storm comes, you can stand on the rock. God never told you to stand on your emotions. You know God is touched by the feeling of our infirmity. Did you cry? God cried with you. But it's faith that moves God, not tears. And God, faith does not come by your feelings. Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. It's hard to have faith when you don't have no word. 
And see, and when I say have no word, you can't say, well, the pastor said. No, you got to know the word. Well, my auntie told me, I, thank God for your auntie. You need to get the word for yourself. Because, see, when you go to God, you can't, you can't say, God, my aunt said. No, you got to say, God, you said in your word. That if I call on you, you would answer me. And you would show me great and mighty things that I know not of. God, you said in your word. Whatsoever I desire in prayer, if, if, if I pray in faith, I'll get it. Whatsoever I desire when I pray, if I pray in faith, believing, I receive. God, you said, give and it shall be given me. Good measure. Press down, shaking together and running over. God, you said, all things are possible. See, I ain't quoting what somebody else said. I'm quoting what God said. See, when I, when I got some word in me, then I can walk in the spirit. See, we try to get God to move because we feel bad. Oh, Lord, please, please help me. I'm so tired of the struggle. Yeah, you are. And you know, I thank God he loves us so much. Because even though we ain't got no word, his grace will come and help you because he don't want to see us destroyed. Amen. Thank God for his grace. He loves us so much he won't let us just be utterly destroyed. But if you really want to begin to walk in victory, don't you do know survival is not victory? How you doing? I'm making it. That ain't victory. Victory is when you are walking in triumph. Amen. Because I serve a God that can meet all my needs. I serve a God that doesn't fail. Now, if I got failure, it ain't God. Oh, y'all didn't hear that part, see? God doesn't fail. So if I got failure operating in my life, then I need to get in this word and find out what's causing it. Am I walking after my flesh and I don't have no faith to believe or what? Because when you operate in faith, God moves. I, I know he does because see, let me, cause the book says <laughs> he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that what? That what? Diligently seek him. See, it's the book. You got to get this in your spirit. Now, here's what's so good about it. You don't have to be intelligent. Yeah. It ain't about how smart you are, how many degrees you got. Doesn't matter how many letters you got behind your name. This book is not too hard for you to learn. Let me tell you why. Because you don't teach yourself. Oh, y'all didn't hear that. The Bible, Jesus said, the Holy Ghost inside of you, he is the teacher. And he will teach you what this means. The teacher is in you. And he will teach you the book. Amen. He'll teach you how to walk before God. He'll teach you how to pray. And, and I like this part. I, I, this, is, this really blesses me. See, if, even if I don't know how to pray, because <laughs> I know the book, I don't know how to pray. The Bible says that the Spirit will make utterances, right? He will make intercession for me with words that can't be uttered. So when I don't know how to pray, the Holy Ghost will just take the desire of my heart and pray it to God for me. Yeah. Woo! That's good news. Yeah. 
We all got that infirmity. We don't know how to pray as we ought. But the Holy Ghost makes intercession for us. Yes, he does. But it's hard for him to make intercession when you don't ever pray. We want God to move in our lives, but we won't take the time to feed our spirit. Let me tell you something. You want to grow in God? You got to pay the price. You want victory in your life? You got to pay the price. Well, what's the price? Self-denial. You got to make up your mind to stop doing everything you feel like you want to do. Even though you're tired, get up and come to Bible study. Amen. You tired, get up and come to class anyway. Because you know you ain't studying at home by yourself. Amen. And as I get ready to close, and you know I wasn't planning on preaching this this way. You knew that. <laughs> as I get ready to close, let me tell you something. You said, well, I can stay at home and get what I need. No, you can't. I get it from the television. You know, I, I like all those preachers on TV. Me too. But see, they can't hold you accountable. Because any time you don't like what they said, you can turn the TV off. Ah, don't like that. Click. Amen. And the Bible says that in Ephesians 4 that, that, that Jesus put in the church, he put apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers for the perfecting, for maturing the believer so that they can serve God. Ephesians 4. That's why we're here, to mature the believer. What, my spirit man just left, huh? <laughs> I'm sorry, I have kept y'all up long. Y'all sit down. Go ahead and sit down. Give the Lord a hand clap for them. Praise the Lord. I guess they just got tired. I don't know. Amen. Now, what was I saying? What was I saying, for real? What was I saying? Huh? What was I saying? Anybody know? All right. Thank you. Amen. Praise the Lord. So, TV evangelists don't hold you accountable. You may get a good word from them, but you can't even check it whether it's true or not. See, somebody, God, God made sure he put in a local fellowship people that can have oversight of your life. So that they can help you to grow in the things of God. Amen. God don't have renegades. Amen. Everybody's supposed to pass under tutors and governors. Until the appointed time that they get released. So you need to get to a local fellowship so that you can have oversight. Amen. You need oversight. You need oversight. He said, yeah, but, 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 I, but I'm a preacher. So is everybody. We're all supposed to preach the good news. So you still need oversight. Even Jesus didn't minister without there being a connection. Remember, they said, who, 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 who is this man, Jesus? They said, well, they started they start naming his lineage. <laughs> because, see, God is a God of generations. Amen. And see, when you go out to do something, you need to be connected to somebody. Amen. So you need to go to the local fellowship so that you can have oversight. Amen. Yeah, well, well, I'm an apostle. You still need to go and get under some apostolic covering. Well, I'm, I'm one of the uh, uh, prophets and evangelists. Okay, that's good, but you still need to come into a local fellowship and have oversight. Amen. So connect somewhere, y'all. And I encourage you, come. You know, my heart's desire for you is that you would grow up in the things of God. And I know you can't do that if you don't get in the word. Why can't we study together? Why, why don't you come to class? What's, what's more important than your spiritual growth? Amen. What are you doing in your life right now to make sure that you're growing on a regular basis? What do you do week by week? 
Because, see, if you don't do it intentionally, you'll get caught up doing everything else. And that means you're choosing to put on the old self. Got 168 hours in a week. We might spend maybe two hours in church on a Sunday morning. Four times, that's eight hours out of 168. Now, that's on Sunday morning when it's celebration time and you ain't studying. And this two hours, we ain't been preaching the word for two hours. We've been preaching the word for 30 minutes. So you got 30 minutes. And those of you who paid attention might, might learn 15 minutes of that 30. Let me keep breaking it down. So you get 15 minutes a week. Amen. That's one hour a month. And that's if you come every Sunday. And if you come every Sunday for 12 months, you, you get 12 hours of maybe some word that you can walk with. 12 hours a year. So if all you're getting in a week, y'all, is one, one little 15 minutes, do you know that that's not going to help you be victorious? The best I can do on a Sunday is excite you and get you you know, excited about maybe going to Bible study. Maybe get a word that'll bless you in your situation for the moment. But I need to teach you how to fish. I don't need to just keep giving you fish. Amen. 15 minutes, y'all, a week is not sufficient. So you have to intentionally Get involved in things that will feed your spirit so that you can put on the new man and not put on the old self. Don't be satisfied with just Sunday morning. And don't let other things take the place of Sunday morning. That's the least you can do. But study. We're an equipping church. We have all kinds of classes, but it doesn't matter how great the teachers are, how good the classes are, if you don't come. They're staying all over the house. Heads bowed, eyes are closed. Father, we want to thank you for your word this morning. God is just a word of exhortation and encouragement. The devil is beating us up, but not because he has so much power. It's because we don't get what we need from your word. You say it in your word. You were taught, Ephesians 4, with regard to your former life to put off your old self. Did you catch that? Paul said you were taught to do it. You got to be taught to walk in the Spirit. You got to be taught mm, to put on the new man, put on the new self. This verse of scripture I'm going to close with, Romans 6. Don't you realize? Romans 6. Don't you realize that you can choose your own master? You can choose to sin with death or else obedience with acquittal. The one to whom you offer yourself, he will take you and be your master master. 